In this lesson we're going to continue to look at simple Voltaic cells. This time we're going to look at their limitations. Now we saw last lesson that a Voltaic cell is made from two electrodes. They're different metals which are immersed in an electrolyte. So in this case we'll make the electrolyte dilute sulfuric acid and our negative anode will be made from zinc while our positive cathode will be made from copper. So as we learned in the last lesson, the more reactive metal, that's the zinc, becomes oxidized, forming zinc two plus ions, which go into solution, and so loses two electrons. And those two electrons are then pushed around the circuit towards the cathode. Okay, so that shows the direction in which the electrons are flowing, and the zinc two plus ions gather around the negative anode. Okay, so what happens next then is that the hydrogen ions that are present in the diluted acidic solution will be repelled towards the positive cathode. Okay, and when they reach the cathode, they will acquire electrons and form hydrogen atoms which will double up to form hydrogen molecules. So we're going to get a reduction reaction occurring at the cathode. That's the positive electrode. So the hydrogen picks up an electron to form a hydrogen atom. That doubles up to form the molecule. We balance the equation and that gives us the half reaction that's occurring at the cathode. Okay, so we've got oxidation at the anode, reduction at the cathode. Okay, so the hydrogen ions are repelled towards the cathode. They pick up an electron, become hydrogen gas. And this is where the problem starts. Okay, so you're going to get hydrogen bubbles which are forming on this cathode as the hydrogen ions are reduced. Now hydrogen as you know is a gas and gases as you also well know are very poor conductors. So when this electrode gets covered with this layer of hydrogen bubbles they effectively act as an insulator. So as a result they increase the resistance in the circuit and cause the current to fall rapidly. So while a simple voltaic cell can quite easily achieve the voltage, because of this hydrogen gas problem, the resistance in the cell rapidly builds up and causes the current to drop. But there's another problem. Our hydrogen ions are pushed towards this layer of hydrogen bubbles by the zinc ions on the negative anode but they are unable to get in contact with the copper cathode to receive an electron in order to be reduced. So consequently you get this build up of positive hydrogen ions on the copper cathode and these act as a barrier which prevent any other hydrogen ions approaching. So you've got this layer of zinc ions trying to push the hydrogen ions in the solution towards the cathode while at the same time you've got this build-up of hydrogen ions on top of the hydrogen gas bubbles pushing the migrating hydrogen ions in the opposite direction. So this effectively produces a back EMF which reduces the voltage. Okay so this is commonly known as the hydrogen gas problem for voltaic cells. Repeat Hydrogen bubbles collect on the copper cathode. This forms an insulating layer which reduces the current flowing around the circuit rapidly. And then on top of that, a layer of hydrogen ions builds up which opposes the EMF produced by the zinc copper cell. Okay, so the net result is that this type of cell is very rapidly rendered impractical. So you'd find it very difficult with this sort of arrangement to light up even a low intensity LED because although the voltage is sufficient to do so, the current flowing through the circuit is very small. Now one of the cells that was devised to overcome this hydrogen problem was called the Daniel cell and we'll look at that in the next lesson.